welcome friends welcome to the knowledge club online now i am going to discuss about the eukaryotic translation eukaryotic translation is the process by which messenger rna is translated into proteins in eukaryotes it consists of initiation elongation and termination first i comes to the come to the initiation step the process of initiation of translation in eukaryotes it's done by two methods one cap dependent initiation and cap independent initiation first i describe the cap dependent initiation initiation of translation usually involves the interaction of certain key proteins uh, with a special tag bound to the 5 prime end of an mrna molecule the 5 prime cap as well as with the 5 prime utr the protein factors bind the small ribosomal subunit also referred to as the 40th subunit and three initiation factors hold the mrna in place the eukaryotic initiation factor 3 eif3 is associated with the small ribosomal subunit and plays a role in keeping the large ribosomal subunit from prematurely binding eif3 also interacts with the eif4f complex which consists of three other initiation factors eif4a eif4e and eif4g eif4g is a scaffolding protein that directly associated with both eif3 and the other two components eif4e is the cap binding protein it is the rate limiting step of cap dependent initiation and is often cleaved from the complex by some viral proteins to limit the cell's ability to translate its own transcripts this is method of hijacking the host machinery in favor of the viral cap independent messages eifa is an atp dependent rna helicase which aids the ribosome in resolving certain secondary structures formed by the mrna transcript there is another protein associated with the eif4f complex called the poly protein pa bp which binds the poly a tail of most eukaryotic mrna molecules this protein has been implicated in playing a role in circularization of the mrna during translation this pre-initiation complex 43s subunit or the 40s and trna accompanied by the protein factors move along the mrna chain toward its 3 prime end scanning for the start codon typically aug on the mrna which indicates where the mrna begins coding for the protein in eukaryotes and archaea the amino acid encoded by the start codon is methionine the initiated trna charged with met form part of the ribosomal complex and thus all proteins start with this amino acid unless it is cleaved away by a protease in subsequent modifications the met charged initiator in, 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 initiator trna is brought to the p site of the small ribosomal subunit by eukaryotic initiation factor 2 eif2 it hydrolyzes gtp and signals for the dissociation of several factors for the small ribosomal subunit which results in the association of the large subunit or the 60s subunit the complete ribosome ATS then commences translation elongation during which the sequence between the start and stop codon is translated from mRNA into an amino acid sequence. Thus, a protein is synthesized.
Regulation of protein synthesis depends on phosphorylation of initiation factor EIF2, which is a part of the MET tRNAi complex. When large number of EIF2 are phosphorylated, protein synthesis is inhibited. This would occur if there is amino acid starvation or there has been a virus infection. However, naturally a small percentage is of this initiation factor is phosphorylated. Another regulator is 4EBP which binds to the initiation factor EIF4E found on the 5' cap on mRNA stopping protein synthesis. To oppose the effects of the 4EBP, growth factor phosphorylate 4EBP reducing its affinity for EIF4E and permitting protein synthesis. Next I come to the CAP independent initiation. What is it? The best studied example of the CAP independent mode of initiation, translation initiation in eukaryotes is the internal ribosome entry site IRES approach. What differentiates CAP independent translation from CAP dependent translation is the CAP independent translation does not require the ribosome to start scanning from the 5' end of the mRNA CAP until the start codon. The ribosome can be trafficked to the start site by ITAFs, IRES transacting factors bypassing the need to scan from the 5' UTR. This method of translation has been recently discovered and has found important in conditions that require the translation of specific mRNAs. Despite cellular stress or the inability to translate most mRNAs, examples include factors responding to apoptosis stress-induced responses. Now, I am going to the second step that is elongation in eukaryotic translation. The elongation and membrane targeting stages of eukaryotic translation, the ribosome depends on the eukaryotic elongation factors. At the end of initiation, Step the mRNA is positioned so that the next codon can be translated during the elongation stage of protein synthesis. The initiation initiator tRNA occupies the P site in the ribosome and the A site is ready to receive an amino acid tRNA. During chain elongation, each additional amino acid is added to the nascent polypeptide chain in a three step microcycle. The step is Step in this uh, microcycle are first the positioning the correct amino acid tRNA in the A site of the ribosome, second forming the peptide bond, and at last the shifting the mRNA by one codon related to the ribosome. Here, unlike bacteria in which translation initiation occurs as soon as the 5' end of an mRNA is synthesized. In eukaryotes, such tight coupling between transcription is not possible because transcription and translation is carried out are carried out in separate compartments of the cell, the nucleus and cytoplasm. Eukaryotic mRNA precursors must be proceeded in the nucleus, the capping, polyadenylation, splicing before they are exported to the cytoplasm for translation. Translation can also be affected by ribosomal pausing which can trigger endonucleolytic attack of the mRNA, a process termed mRNA no-go decay. Ribosomal pausing also aids co-translational folding of the nascent polypeptide on the ribosome and delays protein translation 
while it is encoding mRNA. This can trigger ribosomal frame shifting. Then I am going to the last topic, the termination step of the eukaryotic translation. In termination of elongation depends on eukaryotic release factors. But this process is similar to the prokaryotic termination. It's the only difference with the prokaryotic translation. The release eukaryotic release factor is ERF1 only. Maybe this is helpful to you. Thank you.